Hi guys, I know I said I was going to talk about dynamic memory allocation, and I will, but this is going to just going to be a short video on something about arrays that I haven't quite mentioned, and it also concerns pointers, and is only sort of important, not really, but sort of. Um, so let's take a break from character arrays for a minute and just talk about good old integer arrays. I think they're the easiest to work with, or at least most predictable. That's just my opinion. Um, let's make an array, uh, you know, like we had before. Oh, by the way, since this is kind of just a bonus video, I'll tell you another bonus thing about arrays, which is that um, when you're declaring an array, you don't actually have to put a, put a number in between these brackets. If I'm going to be making an array of five elements, the compiler is smart enough that it can count that this is five. So I don't have to put that there, and it'll automatically put that 5 there for me. And that's, that works with character arrays, too. Um, so keep that in mind. You might see it around. Um, so you know that if we output the address of the first element in the array, like this, um, and then let's also output say that points to and then I know we could just go like that but I'm going to do a dereference and then the address of that so the dereference and the address cancel each other out but I'm doing that to kind of make a point which I'll say or elaborate on in just a minute so point Um, okay, so this tells us that this address points to the number 1. So we could do this for... We could use a for loop to do the entire array like this, but I'm just going to do it a couple times using good old copy-paste. Uh, yeah, this should be 2. Um, okay, so now we have some various data here. So, these addresses all point to the corresponding uh, parts of the array. So I don't really know much about this address, to be honest with you. I don't really understand what it, uh, what kind of number it is. But what you might notice is these last two digits. Just take, just note these two, these two lines right here. Let's ignore the top one. So this is a zero zero, and then this is a zero four. So you'll notice that these are the exact same until the last digit, at least these two, and they're four apart. And so you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, I know that an integer is four bytes. So does that just mean that the way this is stored in memory is just one integer and then uh, four bytes later the next integer? Um, and the, the truth is that it is. When you make an array like this, it is stored just like that. Um, and that's not really very important, but what's important is that you understand that you can actually use point something called pointer arithmetic to kind of navigate around an array instead of using these bracket notation and the way that that works is um so let's do the address of the first element and then let's add one to it okay so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, we actually are supposed to add 4 to it, aren't we, Duncan? Um, and the answer is yes, but C++ is smart enough to realize that this is an integer pointer because it's the address of an integer. And if we add 1, that means that we want to add 1 space for an integer. So it adds 4 bytes to that. So let's see what it looks like when we dereference that, that address. Or actually, we should probably do this on the first one instead. Let's go ahead and do that. Looks like that. So let's take a look here. So, okay. Well, that's weird. Oh, I changed this to a zero. Why did I do that? Okay, there. So these addresses match, and these numbers match. And that's because um, we basically just took a pointer to the first element and added one integer block over. So told it, you know, move over one integer. And then 
we dereference that address right there. So that's basically how pointer arithmetic works. Um, so if, say, we wanted to output this number right here, instead of using bracket notation, let's use the dereference operator, and then let's use the name of the array, because that's a pointer to the first element, and then how many integer blocks are we going to want to move over? We're going to want to move over one to get to the two, and then one more to get to the three. So that's a total of two. So we're pointed to the first element of the array, of the array plus two integer blocks in the data. And then we use the dereference operator to get the three. So let's see if this works. If it does, we should get a three. And yep, there's our three. So now you might understand why arrays start at zero instead of one, because if we wanted to get the first element in this array, we don't want to add any integer blocks over from that first element. We, we want to add zero integer blocks over. So now this will give us that first element of the array because we're not adding anything to this address. But once we start adding numbers to it, you know, we start moving across the array. So whenever we use bracket notation, it really is converted into this. So when we use array bracket 3, it gets converted into dereference of the address of the first element in the array plus 3 integer blocks. So that's, that's pretty much that's all I was going to talk about. Um, pointer arithmetic and how the bracket notation kind of works. Um, thanks for watching, you guys. In the next video, we will be talking about dynamic memory allocation, and it's just really important that you understand pointers and arrays um, when we start talking about that. So that's just why I made this video. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.